Today we are discussing the esophagus or the food pipe part of our alimentary canal. So very first you must know that this esophagus is a simple uniform tube. Means it is having the same diameter throughout the length which runs downwards from the pharynx region. It runs downward. It turns towards the left. Pierces the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. It pierces the diaphragm and ultimately opens into the stomach. Fine. Second one, the lining of the esophagus means esophagus is lined by an epithelium and that epithelium is called as stratified squamous epithelium. If somebody asks you that the esophagus is lined by which epithelium, so you will answer it that it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium fine now the wall of the esophagus the wall of the esophagus lacks the serosa whenever we study the histology of the elementary canal then from outside to inside we study the various layers okay which are surrounding the different parts of the elementary canal say for the serosa then the muscularis layer, then the submucosa, then the mucosa. But when we study the histology of the esophagus, then the point to be noted here is that that esophagus wall is lacking the serosa. And in place of in place of the serosa, there is a dense elastic, there is a dense elastic fibrous connective tissue layer present and that is called as the tunica adventia means i just want to say that in place of the serosa tunica adventia is present in the esophagus okay now the esophagus consists of the voluntary that is restricted as well as the involuntary non-straighted muscles okay so the esophagus is having voluntary as well as the involuntary muscle. Some part of the esophagus is having the voluntary muscles while the some part of the esophagus consists of the involuntary muscles. Fine. Now, if we talk about the size of the esophagus, particularly in the human beings, because we are talking on the human physiology. So in the human beings, the esophagus is about 10 inches long. It's a uniform long tube and it is how much long? It is approximately 10 inches long. But the one thing you have to remember this thing that it does not secrete any digestive enzyme. You might have heard about that digestion occur in buccal cavity, digestion occur in stomach, digestion occur in small intestine. But as here there are no digestive enzymes, so therefore no digestion occur in it. What I am saying, it does not secrete any digestive enzymes. It does not secrete any digestive enzyme and hence no digestion occur in the esophagus. Esophagus is a tube basically which is connecting the pharynx and the stomach, which is connecting the pharynx and the stomach. Fine, so it is a tube. Now it is involved only in deglutition. It is involved only in deglutition. Now what is deglutition? Deglutition is the swallowing of the food. So it is involved in deglutition and it is helpful in transport of this food right towards the stomach. So esophagus secretes mucus. Now we have just now said that esophagus does not secrete any digestive enzyme. And that's why no digestion occur. But esophagus consists of mucus glands. Esophagus consists of the mucus glands and that mucus gland secrete mucus. Okay. Now this mucus secreted by the mucus gland in the esophagus makes the food more slimy. Makes the food more slimy so that it is easily shifted or transported towards the stomach or in the stomach. Fine. Now, the place where the esophagus opens in the stomach, 
right at that place a valve is present and that valve is called as a cardiac sphincter so what i have written here the valve between the esophagus and the stomach the valve between the esophagus and the stomach is actually called as what we call it as we call it as cardiac sphincter and this cardiac sphincter is called as because it is opening because it is opening in the cardiac part of the stomach that's why it is called as the cardiac stomach that is cardiac sphincter we know very well that the stomach consists of three parts cardiac fundic and pyloric so as the esophagus is opening in the cardiac part of the stomach and at this junction what is present cardiac sphincter is present the role of this valve is to allow the food to come from esophagus into the stomach but prevent the backflow of the food from stomach to esophagus fine now the dorsal and upper aperture the dorsal and upper aperture which is called as the gullet found in the buccopharyngeal cavity found in the buccopharyngeal cavity opens in esophagus so this is the gullet and gullet opens in the esophagus once again i am repeating the dorsal and the upper aperture the dorsal and the upper aperture called as the gullet which is found in the buccopharyngeal cavity i have discussed this point in the previous video also okay in buccopharyngeal cavity opens into the esophagus okay and at the last you must know that the longest neck and esophagus in the entire animal kingdom the longest neck and the esophagus is found in the giraffe this is a well known fact that giraffe is having very long neck and very long esophagus so the prime function of uh, this esophagus is deglutition swallowing and to transport the food in stomach coming from the upper part of the alimentary canal okay so today we have discussed esophagus and uh, now in the next upcoming videos we'll be discussing the rest part of the elementary canal so keep watching